Now we can record. Cool. All right. Just a couple more minutes, guys, and then we will get started. Um, and yeah. So, um, and then I believe, guys, um, one of my other students who's getting, who's going full time, will be joining us today as well, which will be really cool because um, he can come and give some input as well on the marks, which would be really good. But in the meantime, guys, uh, while we wait for others to come on board and stuff like that, if you guys have any questions or uh, anything that you guys wanted me to look at, in the meantime, while we're waiting, by all means, go right ahead and ask, guys, uh, whatever you guys want, by all means, until we get started. Um, which apps do I use for the alerts? Okay, so a really good question. Um, a bunch of people ask me all the time. So my brokerage, uh, TD Ameritrade, they provide an alert system um, in which uh, that's the application that I use. So through their mobile phone, they have an alert system. And so it's really nice because um, I can get alerts on price levels, on trends, uh, anything that I really want in the end of the day. But yeah, my alert system is TD Ameritrade. In reference to Joe, yes, this will be uploaded to the full volume training course. Got a lot of exciting things I'm excited to announce for you guys. So um, definitely be on the lookout for that as well. Um, see some of my students in here, which is awesome, which is really cool. So like I said, guys, just going to give a couple more minutes. Uh, we'll start in about three, four minutes, and then we will get right into it. So, But in the meantime, as people join in, if you guys want to ask me any questions um, until we get started, by all means, go right ahead and do so. If anybody wants me to look at any type of trade, anything in general, in the meantime, by all means, I can certainly. Ah. How many Americans do we have here so far that had to deal with tax season today? Or was I the only one that had to? And Joe said, can you show us how you set up FIB, like the configuration of it? So clean. Absolutely, my good friend. So, Joe, let's take a look here real quick, oh, yeah. my friend. Um, just going to mute um, anyone who's coming in, guys. If you guys could just mute your mics, greatly appreciate it. So, Joe, what I'm doing is you got both your FIB retracements and FIB extensions here. We got our FIBs, right? So what I'm doing is I'm double-clicking the FIBs. And then these are the things that I take off, okay? So I take off, I remove the trend line, I extend my lines. Um, in the retracements, I make them reverse. Um, and then I use one color, and then the labels are right and top, and then I take the background off. So just to reiterate, take the trend line off, click extend lines, um, reverse, labels, top and right, background is completely off. Let me know, Joe, if that explained that, my friend. And then welcome, guys, um, to the guys that have joined so far. We're going to be getting started in about um, two, three minutes. People are just uh, running in right now, so we are going to get started real soon. Dustin, what's up, big guy? Hey, what's up, bud? Been a while. Been a, been a minute, huh? It has. How you been? It's been too long. I've been good. I've been good. Let's get on a. Uh, we'll get on a. We'll get on a on a Zoom call later on this week. Maybe tomorrow, or the next day, if you want. All right, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a, it's been a while. Um, been way too long. And so, guys, <laughs> um, people who were part of the webinars in the past and uh, might or might not know Dustin, he is. Uh, um, uh, a student of mine who took my course and uh, is now looking to go full time, I believe in three, four months, Dustin, somewhere around there. Yep. Um, and so that's really exciting for him. And uh, so he's been really, really kicking some ass lately and, and just really finding his groove and stuff like that. And so um, he's going to help out with the webinar today as well, kind of give his take on whatever he wants to review and things like that. Always good to get others' insight and not just my own guys, just so you guys can see how others are thinking and how others are approaching the markets as well. So with that, guys, as people flow in, we are five minutes past starting time, so we will get right into it. So 
with this guys, how the webinars usually work out and how I like to construct them is what I'll do is I'll go over um, the entirety of the major pairs. So I'll go over all the dollar index pairs except the Swiss franc because that's not a pair that I'm generally looking at. And then from there, if I do have someone else that is helping me with the webinar, in which in this case today, we got Dustin, thankfully, uh, you know, that person will go over whatever they want to review in reference to the markets. And then from there, we'll take any questions um, that you guys may have. And so if you guys do have any questions as the webinar is going on, by all means, please leave them to the end. And I promise you we will get to them. Um, and with that, guys, do want to thank you so much to all uh, who was able to come out today. Um, you know, th this is, this is awesome. And so, uh, hopefully more do pile in. And so with that guys, um, let's get right into it. So I'm going to turn off all telegram and things like that. So I don't think anybody's got any additional questions. I'm glad I was able to help Joe out with the fibs. And so, like I said, guys, I'm gonna cover dollar straight down to New Zealand. And then from there, we'll see what Dustin's looking at and things of that nature. So with that guys, let's get right into it. So for the most part, guys, in reference to the dollar and what's been going on, we've been seeing really little to no movement whatsoever within the pair as we've just been simply range bound this entire time. Now, the one thing to know is that we are still bearish on the entire structure simply for how the structure is formulating as of right now. And we understand why we're in this relief phase. And that was simply just due to the massive uh, amount of selling that was occurring basically at the start of December and then flowing into the last three months, right? So all we're really in right now is just a really big range of relief and profit taking. And so in reality, all what we're looking for is just continuation of that momentum, unless some type of catalyst like, you know, uh, really strong fundamental US data comes out and start causing the structure to start breaking out and causing a potential shift within the entirety of the, the, the structure. But as of right now, as we look at it, guys, Still looking for further continuation to the downside. Nothing has really changed, right? We can see that dollar's behavior will cause an impulse followed by a consolidation. And then from there will cause, you know, that continued impulse. Now, within this one complete movement, you will see smaller term consolidations that do occur. And I'm sure you can locate those on the daily time frame. Now, one thing to note is that when dollar does make an extensive, you know, movement in one direction or the other, it will tend to consolidate for a given period of time. That could be a month, five weeks, six weeks, two months for, for all we know, right? And we can see this as we can see the last impulse that was created. We did get this, you know, consolidated profit taking before another continued impulse. And so that's really what we're in as of right now. And so as long as we're not breaking those highs, which is sitting right around the 90, 71 area, that 91 handle, we are still looking for continuation to the downside. A lot of people would say that, you know, what about this ascending trend that you can find from all the way to the downside? And they are absolutely right. That is something that you do want to be aware of. But one thing to note once again is that we are current momentum traders and we're going to go based on what structure is telling us. And we can see right now that we did, in fact, did break the entire base of this initial impulse to the upside. And so with that, guys, I'm not going to really warrant this trend as such a valid area in which it's going to start telling me, oh, bullish momentum is going to start popping into the dollar simply because this impulse, the entire nature of the structure became invalid the moment we completely confirmed that that base was cracked. And that was simply because if this never got broken here, guys, what we would have saw is we would have saw this rally followed by, let's say this, you know, profit taking relief, whatever you want to call it in the end of the day, consolidated area. And we would have started eventually started to seeing this start flag out to the upside. And then from there, we would have looked for rallies back to the tops, but, um, but not unfortunately, but we just failed to see that. And we saw dollar continue its bearish momentum, which tells us, yes, this trend is here, but the, the, the strength of it and how important it is, is really not that significant because all we really care about is two things when we look at the dollar right now. Are we going to break the tops or are we going to break the bottoms? That's all that really matters. And right now, based on structure, we're betting that we're going to break the bottoms. Now, look, if we create higher highs and start cracking the tops, then sure, you know what? We're switching momentum. But as of right now, our bias doesn't change, right? And so with that, we're really just anticipating when is this next bear, you know, bearish play going to come about? That's where the nature of the entire structure is. And so we can see that definitely this base here is holding. And so if we do take a look at the smaller timeframes, we are in a sense just looking to sell the rallies, right? That's the goal in the end of the day. And so all we're looking to do guys, right, is you are just looking to run your trades in reference to dollar pairs to the lows and to the highs of the consolidation, right? Because that's all we can really play right now because that's the only type of structure that we're in. So with that guys, you guys wanna know what the hell is gonna go on with instruction and where we're gonna to move to within the next day or two and I got you there. So 
dollar in the beginning of the week could start it out as a buy simply because we did have this initial impulse to the upside followed by profit taking and a consolidated relief. We failed to break out of this flag to see continuations to the upside. So since that never happened and we did in fact break these lows, we are now bearish and we are going to warrant that this impulse is no longer valid since we did just create lower lows and are in fact re rejecting them with not only one touch, but two touches here plus a breakout of that flag right there. So with that, guys, we're definitely forming a trend as we speak right now. This is most likely somewhat of the current trend that we are in. And so with that, guys, we are just looking to sell the continuation rally. So the downside, that was one sell setup. This is another sell setup. And all we're looking to do is sell these back to that uh, bottom of the entire consolidated range. That's what we're looking for right now in reference to dollar. So any type of rally, guys, you are looking to sell. For example, here we can see that the dollar did, in fact, just make a small term relief to retest the previous lows that do create a lower high within this entire bear market here, guys. And so with that, we are going to expect dollar to continue to the downside if we do in fact break this low. If we break that low, we will see that push to the downside. Now, if we do fail to break this low, guys, this could potentially be the impulse and we could start to see a rally back to the upside. That is a potential scenario that can come about. One thing to note, guys, once again, is that these pushes right here are extremely small and not necessarily warranting any type of shift within momentum, right? But the only thing that we can say within structure right now is that we did get a high, a high, we did get a low, and now we are getting a lower high. So once we do get that lower low, in fact, form that bearish momentum will definitely be confirmed. So guys, just to conclude on dollar, if this starts to flag out to the upside, your goals are to target back to the tops, and I would warrant that this ascending trend is most likely going to get broken, but that potentially might not happen, right? If we can start moving here, could create a double top and start pushing to the downside. That's a possibility as well. So you really want to see what's going to be happening within these three critical areas, right? We could flag out, create a double top and drop, or we could simply, you know, um, break the lows, flag out and drop to the downside. Or if we do in flat clean tops, then you're going to look for the rally to the upside. So dollars in a critical area right now, but definitely showing us that we should see continuation to the downside, at least as of right now, right? And so if anything changes within structure, then we could potentially see rallies back to the previous models. But I don't see that as of right now, the way structure has been playing out. So with that, that's the same thing with EU guys, right? Based on what structure has been doing with EU, EU is the direct uh, correlation to dollar. And so therefore, a lot of people, once again, were stating, you know, are you afraid of this descending trend line that's being found on the monthly time frame? And since we did, in fact, break those highs and, you know, um, did close above them, I'm going to warrant that this bearish trend is not necessarily as important to us. And we are going to look for continued rallies to the upside. Now, of course, if we do see a strong enough impulse, we're breaking the entire structure once again, then we're going to warrant it as a false break and we're going to return right back down to the low. But that's just speaking on a much longer time frame perspective, guys, not necessarily speaking on a shorter time frame. If we take a look at EU, we are in the same cyclical behavior as we once were on the last bullish leg. As we can see, we will receive an impulse, followed by a really nice consolidated pullback slash profit taking. And then from there, once we saw price breaking out, once again, we saw a nice rally back to the upside, breaking the highs and creating new highs. And now we are in the same similar situation, impulse pull back, right? And so what we're looking to do is even if we break the lows, even if we come back down to here, we are still going to look for the back to the upside, just like when we broke the low here, we still look for the rally back to the upside, right? And so with that, guys, we are still bullish on Euro to go to the, around the 127, 128 handle. And so based on what we're seeing with the daily time frame right now, we are going to be bullish on this just because we are holding that previous high, creating um, you know, a, new a new high for us and a new base at the same time on the smaller time frames. And so if we look at what EU did, a lot of people were surprised with what happened um, last night in reference to the entire structure. And we can see that we did have a false break on the smaller time frames, but a lot of people need to understand this. All we simply received was a structural retest of the, of, of the current bullish momentum that we had, right? You look at when structure broke out of this descending channel, right? Notice what it did. And I'll give you guys a different color. It impulses, it pulls back, retests the previous high, creates a higher low. And then what do we receive? Continued impulse, pull back, retest the higher low and our goal now is to rally this back to the tops right 
So with that, if we take a look, guys, right now, what we're looking to do with EU, we can see on the smaller time frame that EU is in fact breaking back to the upside. We can see that this definitely broke out, but we do want those highs to be broken. If we start to see continuation to the upside, that would be a potential play for us and our stops would be below the lows and we'll see what's going to happen in reference to that. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And so looking at EU, guys, that's what I see on the one hour time frame as of right now. Any sell setup would only come if and only if we start breaking back below the probably the 1382. But even if we take a look at it on the um, smaller time frames, it's a very, very choppy area because remember, until you're seeing the 121, 122 handle really cracked, it's still bullish momentum regardless, right? So what we're looking to do, guys, is we are looking to sell out this breakout to the upside, right? And I'm just calling this all relief, guys, after this initial impulse. And so once we start breaking these highs, we can see rallies back to the upside. So that's what we see what's going on with an EU. UC, guys, has been a trade, um, has been a pair that I've been trading now for the past two weeks. And so if you are part of my signals in group chat, you know that we've been attempting to, you know, um, get in this trade for uh, – two times i believe and we got stopped out twice not because the trade was invalid but only because i just set the stops a bit too tight and so we've actually been shorting you uh you see ever since we broke out of this um somewhat bullish uh, bearish flag now unfortunately when we did take the trade uh, we signaled it kind of right within here below those lows and i set the stops within here i believe instead of setting them right above here and if we actually kept that initial entry and just adjusted the stops right our trade would be holding through straight through this entire time. But that's the nature of the game, right? And so if you guys want to know why I didn't put my stops above the previous highs was simply because I, and I'm being honest with you guys, um, I was thinking too much about the signals and group chat guys and thinking that they would get upset if I had too high of a stop loss and it wouldn't be the best risk to reward ratio, right? Because this stop would be about 120, 150 pips. And so um, that's kind of why I didn't give it the best stop loss in the world. Generally speaking, though, my stops are above or below previous highs, right? As our stop losses, you know, our stop losses are used to invalidate trades, right? Not just be stop hunted out. So that was the first trade that we took and we didn't go so successfully. Then the second trade we took once again was in this area here. Instead of putting my stops above here, I put them right within the previous low, got stop hunted on that. So that was unfortunate. But guys, I know now this sounds like a dead story to everyone that's listening to this, but thankfully, it's like a boxing match in the end of the day, guys. I was able to snag one last position on the trade right here. And I believe it was at one, yeah, it was right. So yeah, this was the trade that I ran um, last week and I ran it for about 191 pips with the stops kind of sitting right above these highs near here. And so this was a really nice trade that I um, took to took uh, on my own. Now, the reason why I didn't signal this guys was for two reasons. When I initially took the trade, right, the trade wasn't 100% confirmed. I took the trade here. Once we did break out of this ascending trend, plus I pulled fibs from here to here, and we can see that this, in fact, was rejecting, I believe, the 786, which is why I personally pulled the trigger. But if I am correct, I believe there was U.S. data news, which is why I didn't want to signal it. Ah, it was CPI news that Wednesday. I remember that. And so I didn't want to signal it because I didn't want people to incur risk or consolidation. News came out and just continued to impulse with no really signs of entry and so with that i just let it personally run on my own now same scenario once again guys i personally pulled the trade for two reasons and this is a position that i um decided to build on my own and that's something that i'm going to be releasing for in uh for my students in my full volume training courses building our positions and how we go about it and so this was a two um a true a two trend play and what i mean by that is that we have the smaller impulse trend and then we have this second trend here that <clears throat> is holding the entire consolidated profit taking. And so what warranted me to take the trade was I did in fact see these lows get broken. And one thing, if you understand pairs, guys, especially like you see, when it does break, it will just make an impulse to the downside and sometimes never even give you an opportunity to enter. So what I did, guys, was about 20 minutes before this second candle was going to close, I decided to pull the trigger. I felt the momentum was there and I decided to size in a fourth of the position. Now, the reason why I sized in a fourth position, because I could have been wrong, this could have started rallying and moved back to the upside, which I would have closed for a break even trade, right? Thankfully, that didn't happen to me. And I sized in the remainder of my position once I started noticing that trend started getting rejected, plus the constant bearish impulses that you see would take every time dollar would start slipping, which is how I built my position on 
this. So it was just small sizes based on how structure was formulating, but was doing it pretty meticulously just to confirm that structure was going to push. Now, a lot of people would be like, Albert, why aren't you signaling this play? The reason why, guys, I'm not signaling this play is because, yes, we are seeing validation to the downside. But the issue, guys, is, is that tomorrow we have a lot of CAD news coming out. And so last time we had a CAD rate decision, we saw like a 200 pip whipsaw up and down and almost every single person, including myself, got stopped out, right? And so I'm not really looking for the same thing to happen because there's really two things that are going to happen. Either this is just going to drop tomorrow straight or you're going to see a big whipsaw and then one more drop to the downside. We're still targeting lows. The question is, are we going to see the drop tomorrow? <laughs> or are we going to see it next week after the data is done, right? So that's really the big question at the end of the day. But how CAD is, how CAD is setting up right now, guys, I do see further continuation to the downside. But one thing to note is that this is not a continuation pattern, but this is a reversal pattern, which is why you'll probably just get a movement like this. It may impulse once, and then I'm going to bet that you're going to start to see the rally back to the upside. There's probably going to be a tremendous amount of pending orders near there. So definitely something that you do want to be looking to either, you know, reduce the risk significantly as you take that trade or, um, front, you know, just simply close it. But looking at CAD right now, this is flagging out. I expect just a break, and you're just going to see pushes like this. I don't really expect anything further. But this has just been a really beautiful play if you've been able to Capture it from the beginning, guys, because it really just has been flags after flags after flags after flags. There's one. Oh, there's two. There's three. Uh, four. Right. So this has just been really nicely. So we're probably going to see just on the four-hour time frame just another drop, probably a pullback, a drop a pullback and one more drop to that weekly ascending trend and then from there we'll either see start to see a rally back to the upside or we might actually see the continuation to the downside one thing to note guys is that the bank of canada does want their currency to parity at some point and they are targeting 119 to 121 by the end of the year i believe and so it does make sense if we do break through this weekly trend and start pushing back down to the previous lows i wouldn't be surprised if that does happen because that is how cad is structuring out their economics plus nafta backing in the pressure so it makes a lot of sense Pulling into yen right now, guys, once again, yen is a continued sell to the downside, but long term, you're still looking to run that thing back all the way up to around 124 simply because you have that initial impulse and we're looking to trigger that at some point. But remember, guys, if we look at there's an impulse inside an impulse in reference to this structure. I understood initially why everybody was saying yen was a long back in the day because this was the initial impulse. This was the relief and profit taking and people were looking for continuations back to the top. But since we did in fact break this low, right, this impulse now becomes invalid, which means we should look to target these 100 handle. And then from there, we're going to be looking for this bullish sentiment to start picking up and we're going to start looking for rallies back to the upside, which would mean that this entire structure was just relief, right? So Pulling it to the weekly time frame, guys, um, we did we saw little to no movement occur on UJ as of right now, still holding the lows, right? And this is just a lot of consolidated profit taking, really no clear definitive direction, except you are looking for downside on such a play like this. A lot of people have been asking me what would warrant the bullish sentiment on something like UJ, and I would need to see that followed by a continuation pattern to see another rally to the upside. Why am I saying that, guys? Because you guys can see when UJ started its initial run back in early January, you can see how strong of a push it makes, followed by a continuation pattern to form this entire channel, right? And so the same concept here. You're looking for, you know, either the highs to get broken, and not just broken, but cracked hard, followed by continuation patterns, or you're really just looking to target further continuation down. Now, based on what we saw in dollar guys, as well as what we're seeing on a lot of other pairs, dollar is looking to set up to continue downside, which is why what we're looking to do on UJ. But you have to be careful in an instance like this, guys, because if these lows don't get broken, you're still looking for upside because you notice the behavior of this. You get an impulse, you get a pullback. You get an impulse, you get a pullback smaller smaller and then you look at it when within one movement guys and it's just really impulse all impulse all so i if we see cracks of this you're looking to target the downside then you're looking to sell anything of that and you guys will get a straight impulse just because the entire nature of the structure is bearish um but if we start to see price trickle down here and fails to break this range, you are going to look to take the break of that and start looking to run it back to the tops. Now, if we don't get back to the tops, we could just simply stay range bound guys. And you could simply just see 
that once again until a catalyst gives it a def definitive direction. But the best answer is you're playing breaks below the lows or you're really looking for a very strong impulse to the upside followed by continuation to start looking to run that back up. So the bullish movement, guys, is not confirmed for the next week, I would say. Um, but once again, it's really going to depend on how structure plays out. AU, probably Dustin and I are calling this once again. Dustin and I have been in this trade since the lows. Uh, we've been in it since the highs. Unfortunately, we never ran these trades to the full extent that they should have been run. And so we have another opportunity once again. Personally, I think this is the last leg to the upside before we're going to see the entire push to the downside, guys. Um, and you can see that is a AU's you know, nature of behavior in the end of the day. Um, and so with that, guys, we are going to expect AU to trickle a little bit more, potentially wick. But remember, guys, we are still in this entire pendant here. And so as long as this high holds, we are still targeting downside because of that, just like we saw here, right? So we are going to look to target that one more leg to the downside. That is a possibility. But taking a look at the daily timeframes right now for the next month or two, we are targeting upside. And the interesting thing to note, guys, apologies, I'm on my computer today, so the screen is not as big as normal. But AU, this is, it's almost like it does it in evens. You know, you have, once it created the trend, first touch, second touch, notice this. It won't touch here, but it will touch here. It won't touch here. So imagine it goes that, then touches, then that'd be interesting. It forms a pattern like that. That's not anything confirmed, guys, just making fun. But with that, looking at AU, we've all seen the same, um, same scenario as we are within this right now and the same thing that we do see there. We are starting to see those breakouts. One thing to note, guys, though, that these bullish momentums are always formulated with an initial flag. Notice this. There's your flag. It's very minuscule after this impulse. There's your flag, always after the impulse. So this is not necessarily formulating a flag. I need a bit more of a pullback. But listen, guys, if we break the top your targets are back to the highs. Those are your plays, right? So looking at AUD right now, we are range bound. We are being capped around the 77, 80-ish uh, handle. If we do get a strong daily break above this, look for any continuation pattern, guys, and you're looking to run that back to the upside. This could be a really nice play. But taking a look at the four-hour time frame, guys, we are forming a reversal pattern, unfortunately. This is one, two, three, the head and shoulders. Secondly, this would be the neckline. And third, well, some would call the trend, some could call the neckline. But in reality, guys, this is not a continuation pattern, but this is a reversal pattern. You're looking to target that back to the downside if we break the lows. But if we don't break the lows, guys, you are just looking to sell that flag. And if we do break that flag, that is your play to the upside. And that is a trade I will hunt and hunt and hunt and hold as long as I possibly can. Pound dollar, guys. We are targeting further continuation to the upside, about 146, 147 handle. It is in pounds nature to get there, guys, as I went over this multiple times, right? Pound does allow for big consolidated reliefs after strong impulses, and we are looking to target one more push to the downside. So if you look at the weekly time frame, guys, we are, in fact, showing further bullish sentiments to the upside and it doesn't seem like pound is looking to stop at all and so we unfortunately had the call right here whoops we ha we called this signal guys and just unfortunately got whipped out by like 10 pips which sucked but we had the trade signaled i believe right within here and our stops were just a bit too tight and so um but that's when pound started to take off right this is basic structure impulse relief continuation right and so pulling it to the four hour time frame guys this is just a small relief retesting the previous high getting a structural retest now one thing that i have to go over with all my students dustin you included is there are two types of retests and something that i have to really go in depth with on the dropbox we have a momentum retest and a structural retest one will warrant a longer term direction than the other both are valid in the end of the day if you have your stops in the correct area but that is something that i'm excited to release this week so looking at pound right now, guys, we are just looking to retest the previous high, creating a higher low. If we do, in fact, hold that base, you're just going to look to play the break on the one-hour time frame, guys. Once this breaks out, you see the breaks of that, you're looking to run that back to the tops. And, in fact, you're looking to break the tops. Once you break the tops, close the position because notice every time we break the tops here, guys, you get a small push, and then you will get the relief. Breaks the tops, relief, right? So every time you're breaking the tops, 
watching the one hour time frame, looking for deceleration and so forth. But your goal is just to get a flag set up, which it looks like we are. This might be ready by tonight, guys. If we pull fibs from yay to yay, I'll change the color for you guys real quick. Um, be looking to take the trade above the 23.6, guys. If we do take a break back above the 23, I mean, 23.6 or 38.2, because if we break back above the 38.2, this is a false break on the trend. But we don't really care about the trend, guys, right now, because remember, a trend we just use for, in, in a sense, I, I mean, mental and, and, and uh, aesthetic reasons. But at the end of the day, a trend is warranted by highs and lows, right? And so all we're doing is just retesting that high to create a higher low, just like we did within here, just like we did within here, and just every trade within here. That's the trend in the end of the day. So we could expect another bounce to the tops and potentially break, pull back, pull back till we get to the 146 handle. That's most likely what's going to happen. NZD USD, this is something that we called in signals and setups, guys. We are targeting the 76 handle. We are going to look for continuations up. Once we did, in fact, create a very strong base after this initial impulse here, right? This is all profit taking and we're just looking to ride this back to the upside, cracking through that weekly resistance. Okay. Now pushing it to the daily time frame. This was a trade that we had within um, the signals and setups. If you guys caught it, that are a part of it. Once we did crack out of this, we were going to look to rally back to the upside because we do have this initial impulse up. So we're looking just to run with the bullish rallies every time we get them right with that guys pulling it to the four hour time frame we can see that all structure did and this is what we were stating here was even though it did break out of this trend and broke this low we knew it could only go so far because all it did was retest the previous high creating a higher low and we're looking for this to flag out and start cracking the tops once again it wasn't an, it wasn't an invalid trade guys on the smaller time frames as people could have simply just taken the retest of this previous low creating a lower high the break of that trend and the retest of that previous level you would have pulled the entry here. Just know your stops would have been here and it would have been a short run simply because you are looking to run structure into structure as in this is a smaller term structural play for a bigger term long, right? So with that guys, how am I looking at NZD right now? Whenever this decides to flag out to the upside, I'm gonna look for one small pullback and then from there I'm gonna look to run that back to the tops. So that's the goal on this. The sell bias guys is only warranted if and only if you see a very, very strong daily push to the downside, you know, something like that. And I don't even know if it's worth taking a trade to there to get such a small movement to the base where high bullish momentum is being held. So with that, guys, I'm just going to reiterate the, the pairs one last time, um, just so that um, you guys kind of know exactly which way that we're looking to take them. EU bullish right and so what we're looking at guys is on the one hour time frame it did form this flag once we do in fact break out of these highs we're looking to run that back to the upside and then if we don't uh in fact flag out and create a double top then from there you're looking for that 3a2 to get broken and then from there you can look to sell the rallies but based off of this this is looking like it's going to rally back to the tops we are bullish on euro to us dollar um, taking it to the next one, which would be UC. UC, guys, if you guys want to take the trade, by all means, you guys can just know that there is fundamental data coming out, but we are just looking to sell these rallies all the way back down to the monthly support. UJ, guys, two biases on this, right? Either we break the lows and you look for the sell, or we break the tops and you look for the buy. Lows are warranted by a big impulse, followed by a continuation pattern, and sell that back to the downside or the buys because of this initial impulse, which warranted this consolidated profit taking area. Once this breaks, you're going to look for that to flag out, run it back to the tops. This is when you're moving stops to break even because this could simply falsely break and start the big melt to the downside, creating two false breaks, a potential triple top as some might call it. Remember guys, UJ is not warranted as a buy until we can firmly break these tops and not only break these tops, but break them very strongly, just like the impulse that started the January downfall, we need the impulse to start for, let's say, quarters to rise. That's what needs to happen. AUD, USD, guys, if this flags out to the upside, take the buy and hold it for dear life, right? So you're really looking for the breaks of that, and that's your rally back to the upside. If not, you're looking for a strong impulse followed by a small pullback, and then from there, you're looking to run it one more time before the rally back to the upside. Our goal is to get that big bullish push. You guys, you're simply looking for this to flag out. 
Once this cracks above, that's your rally back to the upside, looking to take the break of the highs and then from there looking to close. Once you start noticing deceleration and exhaustion, don't be surprised by a movement like this, guys, because in the end of the day, think about it like this in a very simplistic terms. This rallied 130, about 140 pips up. This came about 90 pips down. The 140 pips versus the 90 pips down. The 140 pips is still in power. So because of that, I'm going to still take the bias that GU still holds the, the you know, it still holds its base. And then last but not least, and you guys, whenever this decides to break out, this could simply continue to fall a little bit more all the way to the trend. That is a possibility. Then you're looking for the rally. Or if this ever starts to break out to the upside, guys, you're looking to take that back above, break the tops, and then from there, look for deceleration to the downside. So with that, guys, those are, <clears throat> excuse me, um, how I picture the dollar pairs to be playing out for the next couple of days, as well as an insight into where we can see structure in the next couple of months to even year per se. And so with that, guys, now I'm going to leave it off to Dustin, which I introduced you guys before in the beginning. He is someone who works very closely with me, guys. And like I said, is someone who uh, took my course about uh, five, six, seven months ago, Dustin, something like that. Yeah. And so now he is looking to go full time in the next three to four months, which is really exciting for him. And, uh, you know, you guys can definitely learn a thing or two from him for sure. You know, the one thing, guys, that is really, I think, um, propelled him and, and, and really has shown him that he can do this is that, you know, just his work ethic. I mean, I mean, this, this guy's up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. You know, if there's an entry to get, he's going to make it happen. And so, um, you know, with that, let Dustin take it over and uh, – Go right ahead, big guy. I haven't spoken to this guy in like three weeks. It's been way too long. It's been way too long. But I, I feel like he's like my brother. Like I like we like the, we like the same things. We do the same things. Like I think I was meant to be a you, but <laughs> it, sure. it, is, it is what it is. But anyways, Dustin, take it away, big guy. All right. Um, give me a second. Oh, we got a good group in here now. A lot of people just popped in. That's what's up. Shout out to everyone. So everybody that asks questions, guys, I will, Dustin, and I will get to them at the end. All right. <clears throat> so really, I've been just focusing on um, Euro, CAD, and JPY. Basically, because I really want to focus on three pairs, and NZD and USD are the pretty slow movers. NZD is faster, but in Geo, I can't really leverage that much, so... Um, that's really the point. So, but let's see. So, I mean, right now, basically for Euro USD, this is probably the pair I've been trading the most because it, I mean, yeah, it is in the range, but it has most tradable setups. But, um, so as you can see, as Albert said, we are in this four, if you look at the monthly, we're in this descending channel, right? But at the end of the day, if you look at the current momentum, it is up. And if you look at the weekly, you can see that we're making a bull flag to the upside. Hang on, right here on the weekly. Can we see? Uh, give me a second. Let's see. Annotate. The drawing I just felt is. Oh, make sure you reduce the annotations. You know, you know these people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one thing, guys, is that Dustin used to help me. Uh, used to do these webinars a lot with me back in the day. And there's always one or two guys that always found a way to draw on the screens, but. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can see that uh, we're in this ascending channel. There was relief here. Then now we're ascending again. And then as you come approach, like, the this monthly descending channel, everybody wants to call it, it's, yeah, like, like Edward said, as you can see, it's not really, it's not shitting. You know, like, basically, price isn't just falling away from it. If you if it was, if price was really going to fall, then it would have consolidated a little bit. And then by now, it would have shed, right? But the thing is, it's just causing a little bit of resistance and everything, and it's making us get stuck in this range for the last two months. And yeah, price has been really a pain in the ass. But <clears throat> biggest thing right now is we're looking to buy the basically buy the retest and everything like that, right? So like right now, I'm actually in the short right here on the I got into the short right here, or not in the short, short right. or not, I got into the long right here. I'm sorry, I got um, into the I'm, t I'm telling every, I'm telling <laughs> I'm telling everyone, like, long EU, and Dustin's like, yeah, I'm short. <laughs> no, because no, no. actually, like, no, when you were tech, or when you were messing with us last night about the long on EU, right, we got the initial push, but then, okay, well, it was just getting a little exhausted and everything like that, and then price hasn't really retested this zone right here, right, or this area right here. 
So as you can see, like we got the big impulse up and then nothing, no retest really, right? So price really is trying to push up, push up, push up. And you can see that we got divergence. That one hour, man, was tough yesterday. Yeah, I like, I asked, I woke up at like, and I wake up every two hours so everybody knows and just kind of just to keep my eye on and like the, what is happening and everything. And I actually got an entry right around this area and got to push up. I was saying, I normally move my stops to break even, right? But the thing is, right when, if you look right here, right when this broke and retested on the hourly right here, I closed the position just because I knew that it was going to push down before it moved up, right? So you, but you, you secured some pips, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he goes, absolutely. <laughs> so basically, I mean, like, you can see, like, okay, well, like, this is where you have to really assess, okay, well, what price is doing and everything like that, because it's, if you look at this. Uh, Dr. Market, can you, can you right? quickly, but because I know some people will drop off as time goes on, can you quickly enlighten them on that concept? Uh, which one? The, even if price is correcting, you have to really understand what structure is doing. Like, for that example, people thought, like, that's a sell. Yeah, and then that's the thing. Like, the biggest thing is, okay, well, it could be a sell. It could be a sell right here, right? But the thing is, you have to really assess what price is doing right here because, like, look, it's, it's really exhausting right here. Right? I really got into the long, right, one, right when this candle closed, a four-hour close, and it actually rejected this zone right here because it never retested this price right here, right? And even though you know, like, or like you think, okay, well, sometimes price literally just runs off and runs off and runs off. Like we saw back in, hang on, what was it? Right here. Like price just literally runs off, runs off, never retested these highs and just runs off. And then what, you, you don't want to miss a trade. But at the same time, you have to understand what price is really doing because it's, because like when I went for the long position right here around this area, you can see that we got the initial push, but then, okay, well, it never got anywhere because it was so exhausted, right? So when price broke below again, then you could tell, like, then that's when I really closed the position at this candle right here. But um, once you see it rejecting this zone that it never retested and see the exhausted candles, that's when you can really see what, okay, well, um, your position in the beginning was really, you know, valid, right? So the position's in play because if I went long on this position right here, the real – uh, like my stop losses really could have been right here because this was a previous low, right? But the thing is, it's I really didn't want to put my stops that tight. And then once you see this candle close like this, you knew it was going to make a push, right? right. And once and, you make the push, and you see the retest and the exhaustion and the validation of the zone, and then that like your your play basically becomes more it, it revalidates itself, right? And then it's just retesting a zone that you previously thought it wasn't going to retest, so. Right, and just to add on to that, like, guys, like, you guys should just put what Dustin just said in a metaphor real quick in reference to his mental mindset. He approached this EU trade the two times that he took it like a boxing match, and he decided to take his first punch last, uh, this early morning or last night. And what he's doing is he's noticing how the match is going on, the boxing match, and instead of him deciding to take a big, big punch, which wouldn't make him – take a loss necessarily, but for him to get hit a little bit, he said, I'm, I'm a dodge, right? So he decided to close for a small, small game. And he's like, all right, let me see when I can take my next hit, right? And it's the same thing as like a baseball game, right? You're just waiting for that one right pitch, one right pitch to knock it out, right? But notice this, guys, real quick, the importance of this. Dustin had no fear, no anxiety, or no emotional, you know, catalyst that caused him to do anything it was just th this is what structure is telling me to do like i say to all my students let price prove to you that it's going to move in the direction that you want to go to and dustin sees clearly it's just deceleration rejection 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 you get one bullish push that basically engulfs the last four hour three four hour candles and almost like screams to you dustin right like where are we going then we're going to the upside, right? We're going to the upside. <laughs> but that's the thing in the end of the day, guys. And this is what I want here. Leave this here. This is really good real quick. I don't know if many of you guys are aware of this, but this is what market, market maker manipulation is, or some people call it squeezing the retail traders out when you're speaking on a larger grand scheme of things. For example, I'm going to take two banks. Let's say, for example, Barclays pumps the EU up and they just threw $50 billion into Euro, right? So they're causing Euro to pump up, pump up, pump up. And in the meantime, they got another team now that starts unloading all all of these positions, whatever it is, because they want to start stopping people out because they understand maybe, okay, our money isn't significant enough to really get the push yet because we need more players to see what we see, right? So what they start doing is they start squeezing out all the retail traders, which they do. 
right, which you can see right here, which was easily a bunch of people, I'm sure, got stopped out on that. But if you understand when the banks are going to start piling in their money, which you know for a fact, Dustin, after you see that fourth bullish engulfing bullish hammer candle, you know the bank's just um, right on the retest of the zone. Mm -hmm. Right, you, it was about four hour. So, right. so, but like you see that right there, you know the banks just pumped in some cash, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what the banks basically did was squeezed out all retail traders that they could, manipulated to get more orders for themselves. And now that you know the banks just have enough money to double dip for the sell and the buy. We don't want to ever do that because we never know ideally when they're going to kind of you know stop, you know, stop pumping the cash in. But in the end of the day, that's you know what in a sense happened right there, right? And so that's something that you guys really need to understand is. When are the banks going to start really, really, really popping on, you know, re really start pouring in cash? So you can even just see within the RSI right there, notice when the bullish movements start coming about, right? Very, very strong volume we start seeing, right? And you can even see when the bearish momentum started coming about, it wasn't really anything significant. So Dustin played that perfectly, right? But... Then again, you know, that was something Dustin had to, and most people don't understand this is you have to develop these abilities over time. Dustin didn't think like a boxer when he first started, right? It's something you accumulate as you go. So, sorry, Dustin, continue. No, that's all right. No, definitely, because that's the thing. It's like, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, even it's still something you get used to, right? You get frustrated, you get frustrated. Okay, well, like, obviously the push wasn't like when the push I wanted and everything like that. And you get frustrated. A lot of people basically just, you know, like, okay, we see it go down and then they just turn the charts off and everything like that, right? And then after a while, you, you look at it and you kind of understand what it's doing. And that's when you kind of re-enter. So it's, I mean, you kind of just have to constantly assess and assess and assess. And then, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is I started looking at the, like, just the volume just to see, like, okay, where the prices are, like, where the big pushes are and where the money's coming in and everything like that, right? And it's like... The, the red candles, blue candles doesn't really kind of see, but or doesn't this, really uh, do anything, but it's just. This is why we need to have on hand the institutional orders of net long versus net short. Like if you guys can understand yeah. that and understand the imbalances versus balances of those, like it's insane. Like mm -hmm. Dustin, when we, get to, when we get to the sand level and we're managing like 15, 20 billion, you best believe <laughs> we're going to have someone that does that. No, I mean, that's like, that's something like, that is like all manually like it has to be manually okay. done like, and tracked and logged and everything like that and it's, it's a lot of work man okay. <laughs> but it's something that we have to do so exactly like i don't know if i mean dustin knows where i want to be in the next couple of years but to the guys that follow me and so forth my end goal is to open up my own asset management firm which i plan on opening up in the start of 2019 and so forth but my goal here is to get the, the firm so big to the point where i can have a division of market making right like that'd be sick like walking into the office and telling, telling my analysts or traders, whatever, to pump out blank amount of cash so that we can start squeezing out some traders to get more premium prices for ourselves. That'd be lit. <laughs> sure. That'd be a war though, man. That'd be a war. But anyways, like us, us, us trying to short like 60 bill against like Barclays over there. <laughs> uh, let's see which one holds out longer. Like Dustin, like this is us like shorting at the top of that wick right there. Yeah. that. And it's still going up and up and up. That would be sick, man. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be sick. It's going right, and then like right when we get to the lows of that base, I like everybody screaming in the office to dump the positions and start pumping in the longs. <laughs> Who the fuck shorted? <laughs> yeah, literally, right. <laughs> like there's one guy left on the Bloomberg terminal that shows they still got like a, a short on. No, for sure. <laughs> but anyways, continue, big guy. All right, no, for so for basically, yeah, I mean, when once we saw, I saw this rejecting, and I mean, actually, it was a, I mean, it was a combination. All right, so the the four hour held right here. I mean, at first I thought it broke, and then it was a false break right here. But then you kind of re reassess, say, okay, well, you pull from this wick or this wick, and then it was, what it's doing with the zone and everything. So once it uh, once it rejected the the zone, rejected the wick, and that, that's when I entered the long right here, right? So. Um, really, for this, I'm targeting the daily resistance right. around 124.6 or 124.3. So, it's something that I have to. I, Dustin, after the webinar is over, get on a call with me for like 15 minutes. I got to show you these two types of retests. Okay. Yeah. Based on what I've been back testing, this will break the tops and and target. I actually no. I thought you had your daily. Yeah, you're gonna get to your. You'll get to those tops. I'm saying it'll break the current tops that it's at right now. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Like one and like one, two, no, like the one, two, three, seven, five area. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We're going to break those and you're going to rally to where you want. You'll get what you want within the next day. I think London might even push it tonight. 
No, isn't there news tonight? Uh, no, actually, here, I want to show you another trade that... <clears throat> So basically, the initial long I took earlier this week, right? Hang on, was. Oh, was that last week? No, I think it was earlier. Kaz, this... held, Kaz held that thing all the way through. I wanted to hold. Dude, last held, week, held, I, got, I got in like around here. Oh, I got out right here. here. I got uh, in right here. I got out right here. I think I got back in and I got out right here. <laughs> so. <laughs> But the thing is, I didn't hold it all the way through. <laughs> that's like that's what I was messaging you about. About like, like okay, like, I know we're going for like big dick pips and everything like that, but I need yeah, more consistency right, right now. So I'm just holding it like through a consolidation, leaving and then getting back in. So that, that's what I did on CAD. Like, notice I pulled CAD on the impulse last week, and then I'm mm -hmm. trying to take the continued impulse this week. Yeah, no, for sure. So no, I, yeah, I literally got into euro right here last week got out right here got back in got out around this area right here so um but i got back in hang on here yeah i got back in this week right here right where was the bull flag where was the bull flag uh I'm, i can't really find the bull flag that i God. It's probably one. It's probably one of those smaller ones. Yeah, like a really smaller bull flag, right? I basically got the bull flag, and then um, I got like twenty pips, thirty pips earlier in the week, and I closed right before GBP news. So, and it pushed right to my TP. But it is what it is. You get frustrated, but we uh, it doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah. So basically, euro. I'm aiming for the daily resistance right here. And the only reason I'm calling it that is because I, I consider this as a false break for this uh, this resistance, and I'm just holding it right here. So that daily close, man, that's like some serious. That tells you a lot. The last daily close we just got. Oh uh, yeah, the Dochi. Yeah, for sure. It even retested this daily right here. So if you look right, I know everything looks messy right now, but know, but you can see it. You can see it. So this was a big um, zone or a big resistance that was holding everything. All right, and it closed below, but it just retested and then retested this area and this basically area, and then yeah. So I'm looking for continu continuations to the upside for this one, but right to the daily resistance, and then I'm closing and then reassessing. So um, let's see. Other than that, you can. He's the only other sexy one out there. This. Is the only other trade that's very honestly, I don't even think Euro is very clear right now. I don't think UJ is very clear right now. I think UCAD is the only clear and definitive sh like trade direction that is going on. But the thing is, it's a bitch to find an entry on this right now. Huh. So, huh. um, like even on like like right here, even on the 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 longs to this entire structure, I was catching them like crazy, right? And and then like I was on the calls with Albert, and I was like, dude, this is this is long right here, it's long right here, it's long right here. I was catching every single pip to the upside, but the thing is, on the downside, like it's just Wait, like, so you can so see, like, I, I, I can't annotate on CAD. Like here, give me the annotation real quick. Hopefully, no one abuses it. Hopefully, they probably want to draw a dick or something. But anyways, um, yeah, let me Go know. Ahead. Go ahead. Okay, there you go. So, look, the reason why, guys, it was easier for Dustin to pull is you can see you're getting a lot of time within here to find entries. Mm -hmm. This gave you one answer right there. <laughs> exactly. And if you take the trade here, you got to put your stops here just because of what CAD News could do. Mm -hmm. And this is really your ideal take profit because this is where the monthly support is. So, it's really like a one-to-one -one trade for you if you're gonna if you're going to take CAD, which is why – like, if there was no news coming out, I would have signaled it already. It, I, mean, I mean, look, at if you guys want to see what news did last time it released, uh, the, what was the interest rate right here? This yeah. entire, this is a 160 pip candle right here. 100 pips to the upside, no, 170. 100 pips to the upside, 70 pips to the downside. Nobody won right here. Whatever you're short we or long. We, we, Nobody we, won. Because, guys, we were all in the position right within here. Because we saw this broke out and we were like, oh, shit, we're getting it. We are like, we're going to break the lows. And everybody, we, we had like 10, 20 pips in profit. And mm -hmm. I told everyone, I was like, stops to break even and let's eat today. I was like, we're going to get this. <sighs> no one won. And you know it was mess. They raised rates too, right? And <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that should have. It should have, right? Yeah, right? You know, yeah, because fundamentals prove all. They rose rates, guys, right? And yet it acted as a non-event. Now, if you guys want to know why that happened, that's simply because of this. 
the fundamental data only makes a significant movement if, it, if the market is not priced in that given data. The, the raising of rates in the Canadian dollar was 98% given. So therefore, it was solely based on what they were going to say in reference to the after effect of the data, right? That's why nowadays interest rate decisions don't really mean anything. It all matters what they're going to say after. It's all that really matters. Because institutions don't start pumping in cash until they have a good understanding of where the next three to six months and the next six, 12 months, ideally they're looking to position the currency. Because remember, the only institutional traders that are manually trading are the swing traders. There are no intraday or scalp traders that are institutionally bound. All right, maybe not no, but in a grand scheme of things, maybe 1% are manual still. And there's, a, there's probably like five prop trading firms. The rest are all robots. It's just how it is. So that's why. Like, for example, like, you know, the whole bullish push to the upside, that was just a whole institutional push just to get one last grab. And you guys would be like, wow, that's a huge bullish push, right? But you have to remember that that's really nothing significant compared to where the banks have been in this position now, right? So that's really I've taken consideration, but keep going, Dustin. Sorry. Okay, but uh, no, and that's the thing. Like, it's I'm really overset. So uh, the, the I mean, yeah, most of that stuff is really priced in. You can see you, if you you do your research, it's all almost known, right? And that, like those kind of those kinds of uh, uh, news or that kind of news is really just you know what's going to happen, and then you don't. I mean, you know what the decision is going to be, but you don't know what the outcome within the market is going to be with the whiplashes and everything like that, right? Because it's just built in for so long. You look up uh, City FX; they have like the entire years, or the entire years interest rate, like forecast and everything like that. And then, like so far for this year, everything one of them, every one of them has been met, you know. But the thing is, okay, well, like price goes up and down, you don't know, right? So. Um, it's, I mean, like that, then that's kind of why we stay out of the news unless you make uh, your trades to break even because it's like the whiplash is really, it's either not worth the stress or you could take the stress, but you can't really, um, or you could take the trade and then like reduce the risk. But like a lot of people can't handle the, 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 yeah, like you got to be willing, guys. Like, for example, I'm up like 40 pips right now in CAD. Mm -hmm. probably by tomorrow it's going to push lower and I'll be up 60 or 70. I'm basically saying to all the traders out there, because I'll put my stops to break even, I'm willing to lose 80 pips and just wake up at net zero pips to start the week tomorrow. And you guys would be like, Albert, you're crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But I'd be like this. I'm willing to give back my break even entry because if I get stopped out, I'll look for a re-entry. Or if it somehow goes through, I'm going to get a 300 pip push. It's worth it. It's worth me not making anything worth versus, you know, me making 200 pips, 300 pips. It's worth it at that point. But the thing is, like, a lot of people, when they start out, they see that first 80 pips and they see those, you know, that money in the beginning. And then, but right. the thing is, they, they get, like, after if they don't get, they, they revenge trade and everything right. like that. And as I, like, I've been through it, trust me, you know, it was just like. <laughs> You guys also have to, you know, you know, you guys really have to assess what your own personal goals are. Like, for example, I've been, guys, I've been taking 50 pips out of the market a week for almost the last five years now. Okay. And now I'm looking to really, really um, take my trading to the next level, which Dustin is aware of and so forth, which what I'm trying to do is swing my trades a lot longer for a lot more pips. Right. And so therefore it's forcing me to have a better understanding of the entirety of the structure, not from a four hours perspective, but from a daily, weekly, monthly perspective. And so, you know, the reason why I'm willing to get back 80 pips is because guys, in the end of the day, you know, I've done well enough to the point where now I can kind of experiment a little bit to try new things out if I want to, you know, not necessarily deviating from how I trade, but if anything, just improving the craft. And so, you know, someone like Dustin, he prefers to, would rather just, you know, he could potentially get 300 pips this week, or he can securely get 80, 100 pips, 150 pips a week and just move on to the next, right? And, you know, maybe who knows, Dustin, three, four years out from now is going to be like, all right, you know, I'm just going to try to swing my positions a bit harder now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the beauty about the game. No, and that's the thing. Like, there's no right, wrong way to do it and everything like that. It's just like, okay, well, like, where you are in trading and everything like that. Because like, right now, it's, like, it's more of like a mental thing for consistency for me. Because like, it's, 
I mean, when you swing the 200, 300 pip trades and everything like that, it's, a, you, it's not every week you're going to get two, 300 pip trades. So that's the thing. You know, like if you look at every like every setup, okay, Elbert was talking about, you UK was probably the only only pair that had like a 200, 300 pip trade. But, but Boston, yeah. I even, but I didn't even get the 200 pips until the next week. Like I was holding for three days. I, I took the position Wednesday and didn't close till next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You know, that and that's uh, and those are the things like those positions like the ones like those are it's mentally draining to hold those positions and everything like that you know it is like it's even it's something that everybody has to kind of learn and you know adapt to and everything like that like, those positions aren't easy to hold like that you know and that's something that I mean you, you really like after a while from trading and everything like that you, it's it's just experiment and it's just kind of like mental and everything like that and it, it's not something you learn overnight so. It's like a comfort kind of thing, you know? So, Right, precisely, precisely. And, like, you know, I remember when, you know, like some of the guys that, that I work closely with started out, like they would see 10 pips or 20 pips. They'd be like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. And now it's like 10, 20 pips means nothing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's how you have to look at it. Like the trader that Dustin is compared to the trader that I met him back in the day, like Dustin's a fighter now. Like that's the best way to put it. Like if he gets stopped, he's not going to be like, oh, I'm so pissed off. He's going to look to punch back harder. No, that's the thing. When you look at, okay, well, Euro USD and everything with like that, it's just reassessing, right? It's like constantly reassessing. Are you going to constantly reassess or are you going to constantly, are you going to constantly reassess and analyze and then kind of execute or are you just going to constantly, okay, we'll get, we get stopped out, you get frustrated, you get frustrated, get frustrated, get frustrated. Of course, yeah, like, of course, everybody gets frustrated, right? Everybody gets frustrated with this game. <laughs> it's, it's a very frustrating it's very yeah, frustrating uh, craft. So, you know, you got to have a warrior mentality. You know, if, if you get hit, you got punched back harder. You're never going to make money because let me tell you something, guys, out of the 52 weeks out of the year, the weeks that I would say are the golden weeks maybe happen like five to 10 times a year where like everything just happens to go through. Besides that, you got to deal like 35, 40 weeks out of the year of struggle, you know? And if that's the case, then you, you know, you got to have such a resilient mindset when going in the game, you know, regardless of what your account is in the end of the day, you have to remember you're dealing with the most money hungry savages out there. You know, that's what the financial markets are for. And so, you know, they really don't care if you didn't get enough sleep last night or you don't feel good this morning or whatever it is. They, they really couldn't care less. All they care about is are they getting paid at the end of the day? Because that's, you know, they don't sleep, they don't eat. And shit, they got robots now doing their work for them, right? And so it's our job to have such a good understanding of the structure of the market, like Dustin did with EU, to the point where you don't let the banks and the big players manipulate you into doing something that structurally or price, from a price action perspective is not a smart concept, right? Like Dustin played, the EU was the best example of that, of what he did, right? It was just not letting the game manipulate him. And instead he just said, I'm just going to wait to see what you do and I'll, I'll move when you move. And when the banks made their first chess piece, they moved their first piece, Dustin decided to move his, right? And that's, that's kind of the name of the game. If you can buy and sell when the banks are buying and selling, you're in a good spot. If, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it is, I was like, and I was watching an old video from Albert a while ago and it's kind of one of those things where we're like, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to like what price is telling you to do. And then if you don't adapt, you're going to take a bigger stop. You're going to take a bigger hit on your account than you are meant to do. Right. And that's, like, it, it could have been minimized and everything like that. Like, like, you have to minimize your losses and maximize your gains and everything like that. And it's like, yeah, it, it sucks to lose. Right. Sometimes people just can't accept a loss. Right. But the thing is, if you take a small loss it's better than a big loss and, the, and then, puts you in an opportunity for a better gain and a bigger gain and everything like that. And it's right. Like in, in the end of the day, guys, the way I traded two or three years ago is not the same way I traded now, not differently. Foundation. The price action foundation has always been the same, but Dustin can even attest to this. I'm constantly adding on new information and, and new analysis and new things into my trades. And that's simply guys, due to the fact that the markets are evolving. And so you don't, if you don't evolve with them, you're going to die. Like Charles Darwin's book of evolution. I mean, you know, not just the concept, but the concept of survival is the same thing in the markets. Right. And, and 
Dustin sees that I'm constantly adding new things. And, and that's why I constructed my course in the way that I had, right? I love all these mentors in the end of the day and they give you a course, right? <coughs> and you take this course. But my question is if they give you a course with data and six months from now, that course is completely outdated because I'm telling you right now, the market then and the, markets, the market that you got the course with and the market six months from now is completely different. Some people might say no, but that's not the case because, you know, the economics of, of currencies are changing every single day. New policies are being implemented. New things happen, right? So that's why you notice, you know, in the end of the day, I find it hilarious how, you know, mentors, they create these courses and then they're like, oh, this is the key, right? But like Dustin said, you're learning something new every day. Every day you learn something new, right? Would you say, Dustin, that you've adapted to the markets as you've been going through? Yeah, and it's, 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 it's honestly, it's hard, right? But the thing is, you have to continue to adapt. You have to continue. There's some mindset that you have to do, right? If you look at back in, what, like earlier last year, well, like Euro was in a range right here, right? And then, or not Euro, uh, K was in a range and the Euro was trending and everything like that, right? And then now you look at it now. K is trending, Euro is in a range and everything like that. And it is, and I'll tell you this right now, look at the last two months for Euro. This giant range right here, two months per year, uh, USD JPS, this giant range right here, right? And it's, it's like everything you, t every time you think you have it figured out, you don't. And then uh, you just have to kind of, like, it's literally, you have to just keep adapting, adapting, assessing, assessing, assessing. And it's, it's the setups that you saw yesterday, like, yes, they will happen, but just not every time and everything. You just to continuously adapt, continuously adapt, and continue learn and assess and reassess and reassess and reassess. And it's frustrating, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, if it was easy, then everybody would do it. Right. So <laughs> that's true. That is very, very true. Um, but are you looking at anything else right now? Um, let's see. I was looking at UJ, but it just broke out or it broke out today or yeah. yesterday. And then that 23, six, that's, that's the sell for me. Uh, 23, six. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. But I mean, I mean, like for you, Jay, I actually was in a long last week. I got a nice trade. Yeah, that was um, nice that you got, Dustin. I think it was like right here, right? And I got the big push up right here. And I, I literally closed like five pips from the top and everything like that. But the thing is, it's it's one of those trades where, I mean, like you could tell this entire thing was in a range, right? So you, you really have to close kind of like within 50 to 60 pips and then not aim for like 200 pips to the test because – this entire thing is still in a structure, right? So, yeah. But other than that, it's just, um, yeah, you're a long, cat short, but you can't get an entry right now. And UJ is kind of just – Pound two. Either. No, yeah, pound, pound two. I, I really haven't been looking at pound, to be completely honest. But um, for, so for pound, yes, it's a long. I still do – I actually deleted my entire thing okay, right two, here. Two things, Dustin, right here. One here. We're up the top. Yep. And you go to the one hour on CAD. I mean, on pounds. So yeah. So two things that I see. Ready? Just leave that there. Mm -hmm. One, two. Play that flag. Yep. Just like this, guys. There you go. Just like this, guys. And you know what Mongol says that's really funny? What? When pound is forming a flag, buy inside the flag. Because you won't get an entry once it breaks. And he's right. <laughs> no, and that's – it's – and that's the thing. You really have to see, like, what structure and the smaller time frames is doing within the bigger structure, right? Because you're never going to get the perfect entry and everything. Like, I guess there are entries that are perfect and everything like that. That only happens a few times a year, a few, you know, for a few pairs and everything like that. But the thing is that you said kind of have to – it's – you have to analyze like the, the 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 pair I took on a Euro UST earlier this week. The long I took it was a, a flag to break out of the structure and everything like that, right? And it's it's like it's it's just the assessment of what it's doing and what the patterns are telling you, what the daily momentum is telling you, and everything like that. And it's like, hey, you look at the. I mean, look at this. <laughs> you look at this. Yeah, guys, it's the same thing. I mean, if you guys don't get this long. It is literally the same exact pattern. If you look. Notice, guys, when we broke the highs of that structure and we break the highs of this one, that's why I'm expecting this 146 rally. I'm expecting that. Because, Dustin, look how crazy this is, guys. Ready? 
And by the way, my students who take my behavioral analysis course, you guys know, we flag, right? One small flag, then we get the impulse. Watch. Flag, small flag. I bet you this is the impulse. If you guys don't tell me that you guys don't see one, one, impulse, one, one, potential impulse, that's the same thing. How crazy is that? I don't like that's the thing. I was looking at this the other day, and it's like literally the same exact thing. And then, yes, you could say, okay, well, right now we're in this, okay, well, bigger, whatever, uh, whatever, like consolidation flag, whatever, to the uh, upside. And like Albert said earlier, it's, it's going to be a bigger, it's going to keep going up until it shits, right? But the thing is, we have a lot more room to go up before it shits. So, yeah, we're not the thing is, these impulses are a lot of pips. And you're not going to not take a trade for like a year. So it's right. coming right there. That's what I'm calling it. Yeah. And then what is that? What? Like two, 300 pips? You, yeah. you cannot tell me you're not going to make money on that. So <laughs> yeah, like that's worth it. Yeah. Like it's about 300 pips, guys. Right. But. We'll see with pound. We'll see with pound. But definitely setting up is a nice trade. No, for sure. Um, but did you want to go over anything else, Dustin, or did you want to get to the questions? Up to you, boss. Uh, the questions is fine. Okay. No worries. I'll go back to sharing my screen then, if that's all right. All right. Go ahead. And then thank you so much, Dustin, again, for giving your piece. I really appreciate that. Nope. All good. It, it, it helps a lot, guys. And, and you know, just, just for Dustin coming in and giving his take as well, I think it's just really beneficial for everyone um, just to hear different mindsets and so forth. So with that, Let's go into some of these questions. Shiva, Shiva, did you make $500 off the impulse? Was that because of me or because of Dustin? I don't know who it was from. But if you did, well done, Shiva. Um, he said, hey, man, new here. Can you do AUDJPY when you get a chance? Thanks. So I was actually looking at this with um, one of my other students. I have no analysis on it, guys, but I can just tell you right now that you want to be looking for longs on this because this is just basic behavior in the end of the day. And notice what it does. It impulses, then it'll pull back to its low, creates a flag, impulses, pulls back, creates a low, impulses, pulls back, creates a higher low. That's your trend. So basically, you're just looking to, once this flags out, you're looking to sell that, or you're looking to buy that rally back to the upside. And your goal is probably to target uh, your goal is to target around like 84 handle, but based off of what I see on the daily, this, as long as that's holding, you're good to go and you should get one more rally to the upside. Um, but remember it's still not a buy until you break the top. So if you see that followed by a flag, then you can look to rally that back up. But if not, this is the impulse. This is the pullback. If this sells, you're looking for that rally one more to the downside. Really just depends what it ends up doing on AUDJPY. So let me know if that made sense. Um, then Chabi asked, what about GJ? Do you have analysis on that or no, Dustin? I don't know. Okay. I haven't looked at GJ in a minute. No worries. GJ, um, you're looking for continuations to the upside based on what I see right now. But one thing to note, is that this is quite extended. Now, I'm not a professional at GJ because it's not a pair that I trade. One thing to note is that we are false. Uh, we're holding that base right now. So if that holds, you're looking to sell this, you're looking to buy this flag and look to run that back to the tops. But if that doesn't hold, then you're looking to take this trade. And basically, this is like your trend almost in a sense. But let's say we pulled, ah, it's like something like this. So if that doesn't happen, then basically once this low breaks, you got a small term sell to the downside. But remember, you're still looking for buys because the overall momentum is ascending. So really, whenever this corrects, look for that buy, look for it to run to the upside. Um, what's up, Mohammed? How you doing, big guy? Um, they're all saying good luck to you, Dustin, when you go full time. <laughs> um, then... Did you play the conversion? You play the divergence on EU, Dustin? I didn't, but it helped me get out of the trade faster. <coughs> What's up? You want to show that real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, 
So, guys, this is Dustin's going to share a screen in reference to um, uh, I was okay. uh, someone that asked um, about divergence. On the so, if you look at this, right on the four hour, uh, I got, hang on, let me close this. So you can see this is obviously this really very heavy divergence right here, right? The higher high, higher high, um, higher high, lower high, and everything like that. And then once, yeah. what's up? Yeah, <laughs> I, I said it in the message. I was like, God damn, that was, that's some fucking really whatever divergence, right? So that's why when this broke, uh, and this floor we test right here, I was like, all right, fuck that, I closed. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so like once I saw it all form and play out, I was like, nope. Not happy. You, you must have felt so good though that it just dropped and you closed. Exactly, and that's the best. Like it, that's the like is a better. Like sometimes, yeah, it sucks taking a loss. But the thing is, my loss like, it was a very small loss. But the thing is, when you get back in, is it's when you get back in with a better position, you make your money back with a better position, and everything like that. It, it feels a lot better, you know, even though you took a small loss. So, it's uh, it, it's sometimes it's not always about the money, but it's like the decisions you make that, you know, like it. it it really pushes you to become a better trader and like understand what's happening in the market and everything like that. Right. Cause it's. That's so clear. Yeah. If you look at the four, <laughs> this four hour. I mean, right? that's, I mean, it's like really clear. I mean, look, in the end of the day, guys, you guys all know I'm not an indicator trader, but I don't, I have no problem if you guys use indicators as confluence. I mean, and like, that's a double top guys, but <laughs> that's like a lower high on the RSI. You know, that's why when like the, and that, I didn't obviously I didn't get it out right when it happened, right? Because there's so many times where it's like where it happens and prices yeah, continually yeah. goes up and everything like that. But the thing is, once this confirmed right here, this floor out and then it just, it's like double confirmation, right? So, so but, okay, yeah. but yeah, so I think we answered the divergence question. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I'll go back to my screen because I think. Uh, but thank you on that, Dustin. Yep. Then I'll join your company. Don't forget me when it happens. I won't forget you guys. Um, someone asked, Albert, normally how much do you bid slash ask per trade, per pip? What do you – oh, do you mean what my spreads are? And then Ibi asked, did you set your levels on monthly, weekly, daily, et cetera? USD CAD is good for scalping. Is current price not creating a lower low? Okay, so I set my levels on – so if um, – uh, Ibi, I believe you're a part of the course, but the way I do my um, – Always my levels is I go two monthly, two weekly, two daily, and then FIBS. So this is my – and then sometimes I'll include the four-hour levels. I go back and forth with FIBS and four-hour levels. Um, but that's how I bang that out. Um, and then is the current price not creating a lower low? It is creating a lower low. Like I said, it'd be the reason why we're not signaling it is just because of the data that's coming out tomorrow. But – we are in fact, we in fact did break this low and I don't see this, even even if this comes back, I, I mean, this is very strong and this was holding for a very long time. So, um, but I would, I really wouldn't be surprised if we saw this. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens after the news tomorrow. It's very possible. Um, Yasmin said, thank you for the webinar. Very informative. Unfortunately, I have to run out. No worries. The recording will be up. Could you explain about market order flow? What do you mean by market overflow, uh, Ibi? Um, if you could just um, maybe go a little bit more in detail on that. Um, Corey said, more important to understand why and adapt than just to look at the chart, take a position and hope. Precisely, right? Um, you know, in the end of the day, if you can eliminate, you know how you eliminate hope by taking action? And that's, that's what Dustin does really well. I just, I, I'm, I'm just an idiot and runs my trades through stop losses. The only reason why I do that, guys, is you have no many times, how many times I manually close a trade because it was like 10 pips from my stop and I just go through. It's the worst. Which pair would you recommend one should stick as a beginner? Uh, NZD USD. Right? What do you think, Dustin? I'd say NU. Uh, wait, what, uh, what pair? As a beginner. I mean, I would say EU, to be honest. Everybody always yeah, the most structural yeah, pair. Yeah, I mean, any dollar pair, really, because they're the most technical pairs out there. They got the most liquidity. And but actually, NU and AU are probably more slower movers, so... That's what I was thinking. Have, yeah, yeah, so you probably have less whatever of freaking out. Yeah, like if you, you know, if you pop, like, your first trade in, like, GJ or, like, Pound New Zealand, you might have a heart attack in the, you know, yeah. first day. Um... 
What's up, Mohammed? Mohammed asked what I think AUD is doing at the moment. I went over that in the beginning, but it's a two-way play on AUD right now because either we're starting this bullish run, and if we break out of this, you're looking to sell, you're looking to buy that to the upside. But this is forming a reversal pattern right now, so if we do break the lows, you are looking for the downside. So it's two ways: this flag breaks out plus this high here. That's your trade, or we break the lows and we go. If not. You're not interested in that. That's just consolidation. Two ways that's going to happen. Nassim asked, how do, you, um, how do you structure, what is your system for annotations on your graphs? The annotations that I'm using are actually from Zoom. Um, that's how I'm drawing on it. Um, Shabi said, remember that overall momentum is on the weekly. Yes, sir. Quick analysis on EJ and GJ. I gave the EJ, let me know. If, I gave the GJ, let me know if you saw that. EJ here, you're looking to buy to the upside. We are cleanly um, holding the previous highs. Whoops, I'm just trying to get rid of something that just opened on my computer. So with EJ breaking those highs, you're looking to buy that flag back to the upside. This could be start of the bullish rally, but we didn't really get a strong impulse yet. You really want to see that first, just like you will see something like that. So, but EJ right now is looking like a buy to the upside. Yep, that's creating a flag for you. So as long as you're not breaking this base, you're looking to buy that breakout and start running it to the upside, right? If not, you're just going to incur consolidation. The only sell is if we break the lows and you start targeting the downside. Let me know if that made sense on EJ and GJ. You said, can you tell me how to compound on the trade? I saw people making like 1K or 2K in a day or two. Um so compounding an account um, <laughs> time to explain um, because there's a couple of different ways that you can go about doing it. Um, I'm not sure if you're part of my full volume training course because I have a video on how to compound your account and things of that nature. But um, in reality, compounding is, um, you know, moving your positions in a sense based on certain risk exposure in order to allow for account growth without hindering your past results to a point where you're, in a sense, incurring break-even break even results each week. So um, it's tough for me to, sorry, giving some general answer on the compounding. Um, it's just something that uh, I would have to go more in detail with. Man, we got, we're off the charts today with these messages. Love it. Uh, Drew asked, does your account size change the profits? You make a definitive lot like 0 0.01. Um, like, Juba, I'm not really sure I understand your question, my friend. Um, like, do I keep the same lot or do I change the lot? Just let me know on that one. Maybe ask me how the markets are working on institutions push price higher, lower, similar to how the Bloomberg's terminals work. Okay, so Ibi, if I'm understanding your cor uh, question correctly, you were basically saying how the um, how the institutions pump cash in and out of the game. Okay, one thing to understand at the end of the day is that the market – is moved by catalyst, fundamental catalyst, right? That's what caused the price to move in its direction. Now, technicals just bring price within that direction. Now, the one thing in the end of the day is that the market makers, the banks and so forth, they cannot change the outright, um, you know, rate of a currency. That's the difference compared to the crypto game, right? Why there's not, because there's just too much cash involved. You couldn't do it. But Mark makers can manipulate the short-term movements for us retail traders that are trading in the smaller time frame plays, right? And what they do, like I just did an example on Euro and so forth, is they understand, you know, ideally how much they can push price in a certain direction before, you know, price is going to come back and, you know, pull back to previous structures or whatever before more pending orders are involved. It's a bit of a complex system, but it's based on supply and demand models of net long versus net short positions. That's really what it's all about and how market makers and institutions can fluctuate price around. But remember, from a longer time frame perspective, like Barclays can't be like, oh, I want the pound to 155, so we're just going to pump money into that. They couldn't do it. they go broke, right? So, you know, it, they can only manipulate price based on the short-term technical plays, but not long-term fundamental catalysts. Like, you know, if the Fed says they're raising 10 rates, there's no freaking way that, you know, they're going to be able to short the dollar. It's just not happening, right? So let me know if that made sense, Ibby. Um, Nassim asked, like drawings? What, what do you mean like drawings, Nassim? Uh, it was meant to Dustin. Oh, I guess that was a question for you, Dustin. Nassim, 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry about that. Because uh, the the question I asked first was for dusting. You know the thing about um, annotation. I was just. Uh, I thought uh, the way you uh, draw on your uh, chart was interesting. I would like uh, to know how, like, if you have a structure for it or if you have like a template. You know. Uh, what do you mean? How well, I... like you know, color system or like for the trend lines and support level. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, it's just um, yeah. Once you click the, you edit each of the um. What is this? If you're drawing a trend line, double click the trend line, and you can make the colors different. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. that. But you have like a system, like uh, let's say for like, I don't know, major supports, you put them like larger or like thinner or stuff like. Oh that. no, I don't know. You know, it's just, just random. Yep, I just label them. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. I thought you had a system, so I was uh, interested in it. But yeah. oh, no problem. Well, you can always set your defaults and everything like that, and then just change it and every. But it's um, yeah, it's pretty manual sometimes. So. All right. Thanks, man. Um. Then okay. So Juba never saw GJ. I'll bang out GJ real quick. Still looking for longs on GJ as long as that base is holding right, as I was saying. So, same concept here on GJ. You got the impulse, you got the pullback. As long as that doesn't break, you're looking to ride that back to the upside. The only way GJ becomes a sell is if and only if you get a strong enough impulse followed by a continuation pattern, then you can start looking for that sell to the downside. But based on what Pound's doing as of right now, highly unlikely that we're going to get a pullback. I wouldn't be surprised, though, looking at GJ, if you saw this and then one more rally, and that would just create a bigger relief. That's a possibility as well. So if that short-term flag doesn't work out, most likely that will happen. So that was for GJ. Um, shout out to all the women up in here. That's right. Shout out to all the women trader up there. We need more women traders. I always say that. I always say that. To all the guys that are still part of this webinar, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm a guy too. But for whatever reason, the women just tend to pick this up better than us. They tend to trade better than us. I kid you not. I kid you not. All the female traders that I have had work with me, which is not enough, by the way. Um, all of them, I would say like, I, basically all of them have been really successful and they've been very disciplined about it, which is, re which, is, which is really cool to see. But let me tell you something, guys. A alpha woman is someone that you don't ever want to mess with, okay? When you're dealing with like a real, like, you know, real alpha woman, they, they, they kick our ass any day of the week, okay? I'm telling you right now, which is why, like, when you get a, when you get a female trader coming into the game and, and they got, they're, they're really strong mentally and then they can, they, they can take a lot and, and they can go through the ups and downs, man, they're unbelievable traders. So shout out, yes, definitely to all the women traders up there. Uh, Shabby asks, looks like a head and shoulder plays out in AU. Then we're looking to go back to the daily support. I'm with you, Shabby. I mean, we need to break that neckline. If we don't break that low, you're still looking for longs. If we crack this 7740 handle, you're good to go down to the support. I'm with you on that. But we got to crack this handle. If we don't crack this handle, you're still bullish on this because of that. If we crack this, Shabby, all you. Take that all day. Um, I believe we're getting some at the end. Um, do you recommend adding money to the account to allow bigger gains with risk management? Um, person, I mean, Dustin could probably relay on this as well. Um, but do I recommend adding money to the account to allow for bigger gains? To be completely honest, when starting out in the game, your goal is not to make money, but just to be consistent. If you're starting to think about making money right off the bat, you will not make any money. You will lose money, I promise you. Um, because in the end of the day, guys, there's a fortune to be made every day. And so the way I would look about it is, you know, start out with an account that you're willing to blow up and lose. It could be $10, it could be $5, right? And from there, you know, don't throw any real capital that you're willing to risk in. And once you get enough consistency and comfortability, then start adding some real cash into there if you want. It really all depends on personal preference, but I would not necessarily, if you're worried about making bigger gains, get more pips. That's the best way to put it. What would you say, Dustin, on that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely about the consistency and everything like that, right? Like the money. Like, uh, like I've mentioned this out a couple of times. If I if somebody gave me two hundred thousand dollars right now, I wouldn't quit my job and start trading because of. I mean, that's the thing. I broke my account the next day, right? So Dustin, it's. <laughs> you say that people call you crazy, being like, "What? You wouldn't take two hundred thousand and go trade with it?" Yeah, like mentally, it's. 
you it's it's that's the thing it's really not, like, the mental bear on this game is so much more than the money and everything like, you can make a shit ton of money but at the same time you could lose a shit ton of money if you don't know what the fuck you're doing so it's i mean it's something where like even if I, somebody gave me two hundred thousand dollars right i would just do whatever at my job and not do shit and then basically try to be consistent and everything like that with trading until you know whatever happens right but the thing is I would not quit my job the next day if somebody gave me two hundred thousand dollars right now, um, and it's, it's it's really just because like I mean yeah I might not go to work for the next two I might, I might go to work like two days out of the entire week but it's I mean the biggest thing is really uh, it's a mental game right yep like, you know, like, if that's the thing if I had I mean what's his name um Jordan Belfort says this a lot right he basically he says if somebody became like, if you were rich and everything like that, and this is kind of the mentality I went with trading. If I was, if I had a million dollars, I lost it all within like, you know, a half a year or something like that. You have to be confident enough in what you're doing to make it all back again. And that's the thing. It's like, if, if I lost a million dollars, if I lost 200K right now, trading in like the next two months, I wouldn't be confident enough to bring it all back again, right? But the thing is, if I grinded all my way to that top side and everything like that, knew what it took to be at the top and everything, and you lost it all, doesn't bother you at all because you know you can do it again, right? Because you know you've been through everything. You know you've been through all the psychological shit and everything. And like it's – and that's the thing. Like the more time – the more you think about the money and everything like that, of course, everybody wants the money. I want the money, of course, right? But the thing is you're not going to get there thinking about it like that. You get there thinking about taking the best possible trades, understanding what the market structure is doing like at the most optimal times. You have to understand it like completely and everything, Right? But at the same time, it's, you know, everybody wants some money, right? So it's, you, you, it's, it's, it's a like, like balance. This, so. Right, precisely. This is the best way to put it. I'm going to ask Dustin this. Dustin, if I said wait six months and you'll be a millionaire, could you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so this is what I tell people. If you're thinking you're going to be a millionaire this year, just starting out Forex, don't. Because what if I told you wait one year and you could be a millionaire? You'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll take that deal any day of the week, right? But most people aren't willing to commit to that. You know how tough it was for me to go from trading for two years straight when first starting to saying, oh, I got to take two and a half, two months, two and a half months off and go into a demo account for 10 weeks. <laughs> the toughest thing in the world. But those 10 weeks of going into a demo, <laughs> the next four months allowed me to become a full-time trader. I mean, obviously yep. that was, you know, experience coming into the game, of course, and stuff like that. But, you know, the saying really does go, you got to take a step back to really take a couple steps forward. And so I guess, you know, really for Dustin and I to sum that up, it's you got to feel so confident before you, you know, really want to start making some really good cash in this. It's not saying that you can't. Like, for example, he's not, the gentleman's not with us right now, but um, one of my recent top five students, um, Nabil, he actually just recently doubled his account in, in about five weeks. And, what was really interesting with him was he had the maturity to understand that when he wasn't doing so hot to take a step back, not trade for a week, and then from there go back into the game. Most people aren't willing to do that in the end of the day. Um, and, and, you know, so really just to sum your question up, I would suggest, you know, once you feel comfortable enough that you're accumulating X amount of pips week after week after week, then either throw more cash in or just compound that account and grind it to the top. So Nassim, legend, can't wait for you to join the course, big guy. Uh, Juba asked, no, I mean, if you have the same lot with a 2k account and a 10k account, you made 50 pips, the profit is going to be the same if it's the same lot size, but just know that the lot size with a 2k account would have more risk exposed than a 10k account. Right. Um, but yes, it would, it would, it would all be the same. Just the risk would be different. Uh, Muhammad asked, uh, could I go over GU like I did with Dustin and impulse and high find entry? So the one thing with GU is that you can see here it's just an impulse pair, right? And so what it tends to do is it formulates flags, and when it does form flags, it's really tough to solidify an entry. And so you can see here this is a very skewed flag, right? And it's very tough to read, but you look at this on the two-hour, and you can see that we're really creating a base here. It's very tough to find entries on something like this, right? So sometimes on a GU trade, you might have to really pull a gut feeling of, damn, we broke, we're impulsing, I might have to start imagining the position. It might not be the most proper entry for you to take. Like this right here, that's proper. You could take that all day and you can run that straight up, right? But something like GU, 
typically speaking, one gentleman said this when the flag's forming, you should buy in the flag, stops below the load, and see what happens. I wouldn't necessarily say that's correct because that'd be an if some entry because if that flag doesn't break out, you know that it's not confirmed. But in something like GU, you know, you really have to, in a sense, like here is going to give us some time. Like if GU starts breaking out and let's say it really breaks, I don't know, these highs, we'll probably get, we'll be able to get entries within there or within there. So it really is situational. But with GU, you have to have a good feeling of the pair. If you start noticing bullish momentum start rising, you might have to just start pulling the trigger. Corey asks, 0 0.01 times 10 pips is basically $1, uh, $1 profit or loss. The only thing that is larger account balance, I think he was answering Juba's question uh, for Juba. Yep. And then Frankie asked, um, which time frame do you use the most? I was told to have daily time frame four and five minute windows open at the same time to read the charts more accurately in which direction they're going. What is your advice, Albert? So, as I tell everybody, the daily is our direction. Four hours, we're looking for continuations of that direction. Simply as that. We don't enter below a one-hour time frame simply because once we start going to the longer time frames, things see false breakouts. Trades aren't as profitable as they are on longer time frames. Uh, CC asks, would you start um, with a demo account until you're comfortable consistent with your trades, Albert? 100% yes. Um, I would really highly consider that. Really, really highly consider that. Jubas asked, were you consistent your first year with making pips? Oh, no. I blew up 15 accounts. I've been in the game, guys, close to eight years now. Five, almost five years full-time, uh, about two and a half, about two and a half, three years before I went full-time. But remember, guys, I had no mentor on my side, self-taught with the cardboard and everything. So um, would it be interesting to go have a Forex course in university to maybe work for a bank doing so, like finance? I mean, you can. But just know you're not going to really get to see as much trading as you would back in the day because everything's really automated now. The prop trading firms are less and less and less and less. So try to get an internship at a hedge fund if you want to go do that. But if, if you want to learn how to trade, like trade, trade, I mean, find a mentor. It doesn't have to be me. It could be anyone in the end of the day. Um, but find someone that does this for a full-time living because there are bankers out there that do this for a full-time job as well. Um, but you know, I don't really see many of them offering help. Um, Glad, Joe, that you loved it. Really glad. Um, Shata Carney, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, asked, how much was his investment? My question earlier was, how much do you put your lot size each per trade? My lot size each per trade is based on the risk exposure of my balance. Typically speaking, I don't risk more than 1% to 3% per trade. Unless the trade is so freaking beautiful like you see, then I'm willing to sack up and throw maybe 5 to 7.5% max. But typically speaking, most of my trades are 1% to 3%, nothing more, nothing less. Um, but when I was first start up and coming in the game, I was 5 to 10%. So, uh, but with that, guys, um, we have been on the webinar for quite some time, and I've loved the questions. I've loved every single person that has come on. It's been really awesome. And so – this will be about the last five minutes, guys, for the webinar. So if you guys have any final questions for me or Dustin, by all means, go right ahead and ask, guys. I want to thank you all so much again for coming out. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and know, guys, that these are weekly. They are regular. The only reason why the last two weeks they weren't was because I was dealing with the new website last week, and the week before was the end of quarter one. And so took a mini breakout just to kind of reflect on quarter one and get my mind right for quarter two. But – these will return as regular. And so um, I try to get in um, some of my students that are either full time or going full time to come in because they have really, really good insight. And so that we, you know, thank, thankfully Dustin was able to come and help out today. So uh, Dustin, thank you so much uh, for helping out. No, absolutely. No problem. And Shabi, shout out to you, my friend. Um, Shabi guys is my newest one-on-one -on -one student. And uh, we had a phenomenal session yesterday and uh, we were banging out, we were banging out the charts. And so we got another one on Friday, which I'm really excited about big guy. So we will continue with that. Um, but once again, guys, just want to say thank you so much to every single person that was um, able to make it out. If you guys have any additional questions, you guys can contact me on telegram at that FX trader or uh, on Instagram, same username, and then Dustin as well. Um, if you guys want to send him a message, if it's okay with him. <laughs> no, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, so on Telegram, I believe he's at Conviction FX, right? Yep. And then, um, so it's Conviction FX for both Telegram guys and um, Instagram. So you guys can contact Dustin on there as well. Have phenomenal insight. Um, and, uh, I will also be seeing Dustin in New York in the summertime, which I'm excited about, which will be a lot of fun and his brother as well. So that'll be really cool. So, sure. uh, 
but yeah, guys, uh, one of the things that we're really trying to do is do a giant meetup. And so I know that a bunch of um, uh, the guys that we work closely with are planning on maybe coming to the East Coast near me in, in the summertime. So maybe we'll throw the meetup then. Um, I'm looking at some spots I can rent out for you guys as well. So um, we'll throw it down. We'll have a good time. So with that, guys, uh, come to Canada. I want to. I went to Montreal last summer. It was absolutely stunning. I want to move there. Um, but it's too cold in the winter, unfortunately, but definitely we have, I have a bunch of Canadian students, um, as well. So I definitely have to come and show some love to Canada and the UK. I got a lot of, lot of lads and laddies out there. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, all about the UK, right? Yeah. There's so, there's a lot of Brits, a lot of Brits. Uh, so but with that, guys, uh, once again, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, Dustin, for helping out. If you guys need anything, by all means, hit me up on Telegram or Instagram. Just know, guys, I do my absolute best to get all of you in the same day. Just sometimes it is just really difficult to get through every single message, which is sometimes it takes me above 24 hours, but I do my absolute best. Um, and so with that, guys, this will conclude the webinar. going to upload the recording. So uh, to the guys that are part of my signals and group chat, you guys will see the recording uploaded there. I'll also post it on my Instagram so you guys can have access to that as well. But have a wonderful rest of the week, guys. Trade safe. Be smart. Um, and yeah, guys, thank you so much for coming out. Dustin, thank you. So see you guys all in the next, next webinar, guys. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks. Later, Dustin. Peace.